Good evening. Before we begin our meeting this evening, Cameron Ryan, a Hanville High School student, would like to offer a moment of reflection, which will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Mr. Art Oquan. Please stand. Everyone, please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening thanking you for St. Charles Parish Public Schools staff, teachers, administrators, and school board members. We thank you for the many learning opportunities students are provided in this school district. We ask you to guide the administration and school board members as they make decisions tonight and on a daily basis. We also ask you to guide the students of St. Charles Parish Public Schools during the summer months and ensure their safety for return in the fall. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Cameron, for that uh, moment of reflection. And uh, for those of you that don't know Cameron, she is an outstanding, highly accomplished gymnast. And I'm confident we're going to be hearing about her at the next level. So best wishes to you, Cameron, during your senior year at Hanville. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the meeting of the Board of St. Charles Parish Public Schools for Wednesday, June 20th, 2018 is called to order. Good evening and welcome. Madam Secretary, please note for the record that all board members are present. Also in attendance this evening is Superintendent Felicia Gomez Walker, along with the Exec Executive Secretary for the Board and Superintendent, Mrs. Shelley Babineau. The first item on the uh, on the agenda for this evening, we have a resolution. It's item 2.01, a resolution in memory of Ms. Deborah Trago. Mr. Savoy, would you present that resolution? Mr. President, it would be my pleasure, but uh, I've got to log back into my computer again. Thank you, Mr. Whereas Ms. Deborah, uh, Deborah Trago served as a kindergarten monitor for 18 years in the St. Charles Parish School System, Let it be resolved that the St. Charles Parish School Board herein express to the family of the late Deborah Trey its sincere sympathy in this their time of sorrow. And be it further resolved that a page in the June 20th, 2018. Board and superintendent will recognize the employees who have contributed years of service to the St. Charles Parish public school system. On behalf of the school board, 
Thank you for your service, both in terms of quantity and quality. As I mentioned earlier, you represent 1,595 years of service. Our, our employees are our greatest asset, so again, thank you for your service. Congratulations and best wishes in your retirement. At the conclusion of the retirement of the uh, rec uh, recognition ceremony, we will take a short recess to allow those who would like to leave to do so. Thank you. In appreciation of your years of service, each retiree will receive a St. Charles Parish Public Schools jacket and a goal card, um, which will allow you to enter into sporting events and school plays at no cost. Do know that all playoff games, um, graduation ceremonies, and Dr. Rodney LaFon Performing Arts Center events are not included in this goal card. <laughs> so don't try. <laughs> when I call your name, please come forward. Udola Araby. Callie Bonvillian. Susan Boudreaux. Edward Carter, Jr. Lisa Chasson. <coughs> Wayne Gasson. Charmaine Green. Mary Hoffman.
Susie Joseph. Mary Ladrid. Maria Lambert. Darlene Landesh. Joy Loga. Joanne Mathern. <laughs> Terry McCoy. Rose Mobley. Sandra Morell. Emil Robertson. William Shedler. Galen St. Pierre. Priscilla Thibodeau. (laughs) 
Elizabeth Thompson McKee. Raynell Troxler. And Scott Villamoret. We'll now take a, a short recess to allow those who would like to leave to do so. Again, uh, thank you, congratulations, and best wishes in your retirement. We'll resume our meeting to uh, conduct the business portion of the meeting. Beginning with item 4.01, minutes of the May 23rd, 2018 regular board meeting. Mr. President, I move approval of the minutes of the May 23rd, 2018 board meeting. I'll oh, second. We have a motion by Mr. Robichaud, seconded by Mr. Nakan. Any discussion? Please cast your vote. That motion carries with all members voting in favor. Item 4.02, personnel items. This agenda item was reviewed at the Personnel and Policy Committee meeting of the board on June 18th, 2018, and is aligned with goal B of the board's strategic plan. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Alexander, seconded by Mr. Savoy. Any discussion? Please cast your vote. That motion passes by unanimous vote. Item 4.03, renewal term of the Board of Trustees for the Ethel Scheffner Scholarship Fund. Members of the Board of Trustees of the Ethel Scheffner Scholarship Fund, Fund were initially appointed to staggered three-year, two-year, and one-year terms, respectively. No time limit was set on the number of terms any one appointee could serve. Accordingly, it is necessary for the St. Charles Parish School Board to appoint new members, renew the terms of the current members, or replace members. The St. Charles Parish School Board is the overseeing custodian of this trust fund, and members of the Board of Trustees must be approved by the school board in order to award scholarships in conformity with set criteria and guidelines. Mr. President, Mr. President I move that we renew the terms of Ms. LaRoe Gonzalez. And Ms. Helen Mims to the Ethel Schaffner Board of Trustees for the period of July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2021. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Nockhand, seconded by Mrs. Bernard. Any discussion? Please cast your vote. That motion passes by unanimous vote. 
Item 4.04 is to ratify the appointment of the Board of Trustees for the Ethel Scheffner Scholarship Fund. Uh, it is necessary for the St. Charles Parish School Board to um, ratify the appointment of members Ms. Stephanie Ward and Ms. Aurora Romero through June 30th, 2019. Move approval. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Nakian, seconded by Mr. Savoy. Any discussion? Please cast your vote. That motion passes by unanimous vote. Item 4.05 is Code of Ethics Policy 4.06 for first reading. Upon review of Board Policy 4.06, Conflict of Interest, revisions were necessary to align with recommendations from Louisiana Legislative Auditor's Office. This agenda item was reviewed at the Personnel and Policy Committee meeting of the Board on Monday, June 18, 2018. Mr. President, I move that we accept the board policy 4.106, the Code of Ethics, for its first reading. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Savoy, seconded by Mrs. Bernard. Any discussion? Please cast your vote. That motion passes by unanimous vote. For item 4.06, bid authorization request, Dr. Rodney Orlefond Performing Arts Center, Concert Grand Piano. The Dr. Rodney Orlefond Performing Arts Center is an approved project of the 2015 bond issue. Specifications have been completed for Concert Grand Piano and are ready for bid. This agenda item was reviewed at the Capital Improvements Committee meeting of the board on Monday, June 18, 2018, and is aligned with goal D of the board's strategic plan. Mr. President, I move approval of the bid authorization request for a concert grand piano for the Dr. Rodney R. LaFond Performing Arts Center. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Robichaud, seconded by Mrs. Bernard. Any discussion? Please cast your vote. That motion passes by a vote of seven to one. Next item is item 4.07, official journal for fiscal year 2018-2019. Louisiana revised statute title 43, section 141, requires that each school board select an official journal for a term not to exceed one year. The newspaper shall have been published in an office physically located in St. Charles Parish for a period of five years preceding the selection. Shall not have missed during that period as many as three consecutive issues unless caused by fire, flood, strike, or natural disaster. Shall have maintained a general paid circulation at St. Charles Parish for five consecutive years prior to selection and shall have been entered in a U.S. post office in St. Charles Parish under a second-class mailing permit in that parish for a period of five consecutive years prior to the selection. At this time, only the St. Charles Herald Guide qualifies as the school board's official journal. This agenda item was reviewed at the Finance and Audit Committee meeting of the board on Monday, June 18, 2018, and is aligned with Goal E, of the board strategic action plan. Mr. President, I move that we accept the St. Charles Parish Herald Guide as the school's official journal for the years 2018 to 2019. Second. 
We have a motion by Mr. Savoy, second by Mr. Alexander. Just like to note for the record that the uh, approximate cost is going to be about fifteen thousand dollars per year. Any dis any discussion on this item? Please cast your vote. That motion passes by unanimous vote. <laughs> Item 4.08, sales tax holiday. During the 2007 regular session of the Louisiana legislature, Senate Bills 3 and 272 provided for a state sales tax holiday on the first consecutive Friday and Saturday of August each year. Expanding the sales tax holiday to include local sales taxes allows the citizens of St. Charles Parish the opportunity to save additional money on purchases in St. Charles Parish. The sales tax holiday will take place on August 3rd and August 4th 2018. A resolution is being proposed to permit the holiday to include the local sales taxes for St. Charles Parish. This agenda item was reviewed at the Finance and Audit Committee meeting of the board on Monday, June 18, 2018, and is aligned with Goal C of the board's strategic plan. Mr. President, I'll move the, to remain this item back to administration. I'll second. We have a motion by Mr. Robuchot, second by Mr. Nakin, to remand this back to register uh, to administration. Will we would we yeah, like I, the uh, sales tax director to maybe come up and explain what's going on in the in the capital? I understand there's some legislation being proposed in Baton Rouge that may have an impact on this uh, this item, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Yes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we were informed by the Louisiana Department of Revenue that uh, two bills proposing to eliminate the sales tax holiday were going to be introduced today. Um, I, I looked at the website for the uh, session and did not see anything relating to that matter. So I don't have any additional information on that, but I do know that they are taking that up during the special, uh, well, the third extraordinary session of the 2018 legislative session. Well, our next board meeting is uh, July 18th, so uh, the special session would have ended by then, so I think we have time to take this item up then, and and if we uh, do decide to uh, to approve that item, uh, it's, you know, it would still be before the holiday. Correct. Obviously. That'd be correct. Why, All right. Why, why couldn't we approve this tonight? and let the chips fall as they may. You know, it's either they're gonna uh, have a sales tax holiday, which we will have approved the resolution tonight, or they're not. And, uh, it wouldn't matter whether we uh, approve a resolution or not. Um, we are, uh, based on the law that we was uh, introduced back in, I think it was 2011, when we start, first started the sales tax holiday, it is contingent upon whether or not the state has their holiday on the same conditions, the dates, um, and uh, procedures that the state has their holiday. So I'm not, I guess you could approve it contingent upon whether or not the state has their holiday. And if they don't? And if they don't, we don't. It's no good. Correct. I think, I think in order to do that, you're gonna have to change the motion, but um, I think that in this particular case, it would be more appropriate rather than remanding the issue back to the superintendent if the board would vote to table the issue. So I'll offer a substitute motion to table the item uh, as opposed to remanding it back to the superintendent. At that point, it can be removed from the table at any time the board chooses to remove it from the table and act on it. I second the substitute motion. Okay, we have a... a, a, a motion and a second uh, substitute motion to table this item rather than remand it back. Uh, 
Any any further discussion on this item? No discussion on motion to table. Okay. okay, thank you. Right. We have a motion by Mr. Smith, seconded by Mrs. Bernard to uh, table this item until further notice. Um, and uh, any further discussion? Please cast your vote. That motion passes by a seven to one vote. We move on to item 4.09, which is interim fiscal year 2019 budget. The preliminary budget packet was sent to the board on Wednesday, May 23rd, 2018. A public hearing was held on Wednesday, June 20th. 2018 this evening at 545 in compliance with statutory provisions this agenda item was reviewed at the finance and audit committee meeting of the board on Monday June 20th 2018 and is aligned with goal C of the board's strategic plan the proposed budget for fiscal year 2019 represents a budget that allocates approximately 71 percent of general fund expenditures in the area of instruction. And before we receive a motion on this, if we could ask our CFO, Ms. Donna Post, to come up and uh, make a short presentation on the, uh, on the proposed budget. Good evening, and thank you for this opportunity to give an overview of our fiscal year 19 interim budget. I'd like to start with the general fund and looking at the revenues, first of all. We are projecting general fund revenues of 143.4 million. And in consideration of that number, we um, took into consideration the increase in ad valorem tax that we are expecting, which was $5 million, and also the decrease in sales tax of $6.2 million when you compare it to the fiscal year 18 budget. Also, this will be the first year for the uh, operations of the Dr. Rodney Arlafon Performing Arts Center, and we are, are projecting a million dollars in revenue uh, made up of ticket sales and donations for that facility. When you look at the uh, expenditures for the general fund, we are budgeting $140.8 million, which represents an increase of $1.6 million in expenditures over prior year. We are also uh, projecting that our transfers out to our debt service funds, uh, the capital projects funds, and the lunch fund to decrease by 335000 Looking a little closer at the general fund revenues, you can see that this, this chart shows uh, the interim 19 budget alongside the revised fiscal year 18 budget. And the revenue from our local sources is projected to decrease by 273,000. And the state sources also is projected to decrease, but by a smaller amount, 48,000. So that has how we come to the $321,400 decrease in revenue for general fund. Looking at the expenditures a little closer, we have it categorized by the instructional expenses, which is projected to increase nearly $2.5 million. The support services that will decrease 786,000. And then the community uh, expenditures, which will also decrease by 47,000. And that brings you to the total of the increase in expenditures of 1.6 million. Now moving on to the other funds, our special revenue funds, we are expecting nearly $8 million uh, to go through our re uh, special revenue funds, which is a slight decrease from prior year um, in the amount of 444000 But grants are still being approved, and so as those grants are approved, we will 
also account for those in our budget at that time. In our debt service funds, we are expecting to retire the debt on the sales tax school refunding bonds series 2019 by making the final payment in this fiscal year. Um, the revenues in those funds are expected to be nearly $7 million and the expenditures $11 million. In our capital project funds, we're expecting a revenue of $6.5 million with the expenditure is expected to be $12.6 million, and this is including the completion of the 2015 bond issue projects, as well as covering our maintenance salaries, the repair and upkeep of our buildings, and the athletic facilities. And the last fund that we'll look at is the lunch fund, where we are expecting a slight decrease in revenue of $79,000, and expenditures are also expected to decrease by 333,000. Two more points of interest. Approximately 73% of our general fund expenditures that we've budgeted are for instructional purposes. And the budget also provides for the continuation of the technology plan to provide Chromebooks for the third grade level. That concludes my report. And if the board has any questions, I'll be happy to entertain them. Just a point of as a point of order, the board should have voted, not voted, but um, actually had a motion to deal with this item prior to the presentation. So at, at this point, I think we, had, we need to call for the motion on this item. Okay. I so move. Second. We have a motion by Mr. O'Quinn, second by Mr. Smith. Any discussion or questions for the CFO or the superintendent? Please, please cast your vote. Ms. Post, as you were mentioned, the debt service fund, I couldn't help but uh, think of our bond council, uh, who's been such a vital part of our success. And uh, if I may take just a moment of personal privilege and recognize our bond council, who's in attendance tonight, Mr. Hugh Martin. Mr. Hugh, you want to maybe come up and introduce your, your guests here this evening? It's a pleasure to be here again tonight. And uh, I was happy to get an in invite to come to this meeting and just to, be, to meet with you again and see you in action. I was impressed with how you conduct your affairs and how well this parish school board has been run. Uh, have with me tonight Jason Akers. Jason uh, came to work with us approximately 11 years ago, uh, and he has been very, very active in our firm, is a uh, full partner, and uh, is involved in the management of the firm. And. Uh, just wanted you to meet him and know he's here in the backup and have him say a few words, if you would allow it. Absolutely. I'm on the spot now, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I had occasion to work with the parish on a couple of issues and um, uh, also, uh, you know, as I mentioned to some of you earlier, I had a chance to attend a meeting several years ago to cover for Mr. Hugh one night, but I'm happy to be here um, and help him out on uh, the work for the district and the school board going forward. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> Before Mr. Martin leaves, um, I'd like to raise a question um, that he may be able to give us some insight on. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is basically for the public uh, understanding here. It's my understanding that um, the bond rating for St. Charles Parish School District is, is going to be changing or has has changed and as such it's our understanding that the reason for that is because of the fund balance that we have in our budget at this particular time. Could you expand, expand yeah. on that? 
Uh, first for, for us, for the public's sake, yeah. just a minute. Oh, approximately, what, almost a year now ago, uh, the rating issued by S&P uh, Standard & Poor's was decreased from a double A to a double A minus. Uh, and the reasons for that were the ones you just uh, stated, Mr. Smith, that uh, the uh, fund balances in the, in the school system, which was spent down, some of them purposely in order to use cash to construct some of your capital improvements rather than bond proceeds. But the, and while you would think that's a good thing, and from a business practice, it certainly is a good thing. But when it's viewed by the rating agencies, they love to see cash in the bank. So that was a negative. We also had other things that occurred. Uh, we had a decrease in the assessed valuation and a reduction in sales tax revenue because of economic conditions over which the school board has no, no uh, way to control. Uh, also with some ex expenditures relating to, uh, to uh, uh, capital needs that, that, that impacted the, impacted the budget. Now, since that time of almost a year ago, just recently in the last couple of weeks, S&P has again reviewed the rating, and they confirmed the rating that we had gotten the time before, which is a double A minus. And in there, they, they, they gave a rating that there was a very satisfactory as far as we're concerned, but we like to be close number one, the way we are most of the time. And one of the things you can do is try to keep your fund balances up and the expenditures down and try not to have any deficits and everything, anything. Unfortunately, one of the things we get penalized with, you would think is something we ought to be praised for, and that is for the large industrial complex we have here, primarily though in oil and gas and chemicals. And from the rating agency's view, that's a concentration, one small part of the economy. They don't like concentration. Most places would be love to have your concentration. <laughs> if I ran a parish, I sure would. But that's, that's, the, that's the, the law, not the law, but the, the uh, rules by which they run and by which they judge it. So hopefully if we can maintain ourselves for another year, and give a chance for the business climate to improve, that maybe we get our, our A minus back, reduce rather, and go back to double A. Thank you very much, Mr. Martin. And thank you for coming out this evening. We okay. Nice to be with you. Right. Any further discussion on this item? Please cast your vote. That motion passes by unanimous vote. Item 4.10, resolution to approve the millage rates for, ta for the tax year 2018. Louisiana revised statute title 47, section 1705, paragraph A, requires an agency with tax and authority to furnish the assessor and the legislative auditor with the tax rate to be applied to the assessed property values each year. The St. Charles Parish School Board as a taxing body must take official action to approve the levy of property tax rates. 
favorable board action on a resolution as necessary for the millages to be levied and taxes collected. This agenda item was reviewed at the Finance and Audit Committee meeting of the board on Monday, June 18th, 2018, and is aligned with goal C of the board's strategic plan. I move that we adopt the resolution to approve the millage rates for the tax year 20, 2018. Second. We have a motion by Mr. O'Quinn, seconded by Mrs. Bernard. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. President, um, I want to go on record as a, opposing this resolution because I think we're making a big mistake by not levying the millage rate for school operation and man maintenance to the uh, maximum amount that we could in order that we could uh, give pay raises to the teachers, not only the teachers, but the supporting staff as well. Okay. So noted, uh, Madam Secretary, is that okay? Um, any further discussion? I would just like to mention uh, or mentioned with the rates are school construction tax millage rate is 4.12 school operations and maintenance tax is 41.71 school construction improvement 4.92 school bonds 5.01 any further discussion please cast your vote That motion passes by a vote of seven to one. Item 4.11 is superintendent's evaluation. The board has, conduct, has conducted the superintendent's evaluation for the 2017-2018 school year. The performance of the superintendent has included significant accomplishments during the year. Entertain a motion. I move approval of the continuation of the existing contract. Second. Motion by Mrs. Bernard, seconded by Mrs. by Mr. Savoy. Any discussion on this item? Please cast your vote. And that motion passes by unanimous vote. Item 4.12 is accounts payable for the month of May 2018. Invoices and other financial obligations of the school district are customarily paid weekly. Requests for approval of these transactions is normally made to the board monthly. The board must approve expenditures of public funds under its jurisdiction. This agenda item was reviewed at the Finance and Audit Committee meeting of the board on Monday, June 20th, 2018, and is aligned with goal C of the board's strategic plan. Mr. President, I move we approve the accounts payable for the month of May 2018 as presented. Second. We have a motion by Mr. O'Quinn, second by Mr. Robichaud. Any discussion? Please catch your vote. I'd just like to note uh, that the total amount of the account is payable is uh, $3,516,779.64. Any
That motion passes by unanimous vote. We move to uh, closing items. Item 5.01, standing committee reports. Any chair of a standing committee may present a report at this time. Mr. President, Capital Improvements Committee met on Monday the 18th, and we reviewed three items. First item was an update on the Rodney uh, LaFond Farming Arts Center. Um, things seem to be going along pretty well. Uh, you know, our target date remains the same, and uh, according to the contractor, he's, he's still confident that he can meet the date. Second item on the agenda was the uh, bid authorization for the grand piano, which came to the board tonight and was approved. Um, and the third item that we discussed, um, you know, is based on our safety and security. It's a top priority for this board and administration. So the board directed the administration to activate a safety and security review committee that will meet quarterly to review current safety measures and practices, including the school's comprehensive plan. The committee will also identify possible enhancements and improvements to the current plan. So that's some information that uh, we look forward to bringing back to the board and, um, you know, just seeing if, if there are any defects in our in our armor. Uh, and if there are, give us an opportunity to address them, but uh, give everybody an opportunity to, to review exactly what, what we have in place. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Narcan. Yeah, Mr. President, the uh, Policy and Personnel Committee met Monday, uh, June the 18th, and we had two items on the agenda. Uh, personnel uh, dealt with tonight and also the code of ethics policy that's something new that we got from the legislation so that, that concludes my report thank you mr Savoy. mr president the curriculum instruction and assessment committee met on monday june the 18th we had one item on our agenda that was for committee meeting only um miss jenny medina hamilton who is the director of uh, uh, gifted and talented in our arts department gave us an update on the arts coursework uh, regarding the LaFon Performing Arts Center. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mrs. Bernard. The uh, Finance and Audit Committee met on Monday, June 20th, and we covered five items. Uh, all five of those items came to the full board during this meeting and were approved. Those items were the official journal for fiscal year 2018-2019 sales tax holiday, the interim fiscal year 2019 budget, the resolution to approve the millage rates for tax year uh, 2018, and the accounts payable for the month of May 2018. Any other committee reports? Okay, that takes us to item uh, 5.02, which is the superintendent's report. Madam Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to start by thanking the board for your support this past year. Um, our success uh, is due to the relationship between uh, the board, the superintendent, and the hard work of the employees of St. Charles Parish. So thank you very much. As most citizens are aware, hurricane season began on June 1st and extends through November. The state parish and emergency operations centers have distributed information about hurricane preparedness and response. Over the years, St. Charles Parish Public Schools has worked closely with our parish's emergency operations center to make sure that the school system has a comprehensive plan for preparing and responding to hurricane events. Tonight, John Rome, Chief Plant Services and Security Officer, will communicate highlights of this plan. Mr. Rome. Good evening. Uh, the superintendent and the board has asked me to come before the public tonight and share with you the district initiatives that have been taken to prepare for hurricanes and tropical weather. With the early activity we've seen so far, it's imperative that we remain vigilant and be prepared to carry out these plans. The district's hurricane disaster preparedness and recovery plans uh, were developed after Hurricane Katrina and include a section for each department and a general section for all schools and sites. In keeping with the district's theme of continuous improvement, these plans are reviewed and revised every year based on best practices as well as lessons learned from previous tropical activity. Amongst these district initiatives, some of the main ones will be highlighted in the next few slides. It's basically set up in three sections, pre-hurricane planning, post-hurricane immediate response, and post-hurricane recovery. 
In the pre-hurricane planning phase, one of the major components we have are emergency contracts for restoration in buildings and grounds. These are pre-positioned contracts which are recommended by FEMA where you set up with vendors before the storm happens so you already have the contract outlined so you can hit the ground running as soon as the event happens to mitigate any damages that may be from water or either um, water or wind, any repairs to buildings or grounds. Uh, other items of note is an assessment of facilities for existing conditions. It's very important to know where we're at going into the storm. That way we can uh, remedy any situations that, that, that may be of concern and we'll be prepared uh, going forward to, uh, to fortify our buildings for the upcoming event. Uh, another key item is authorization for reentry. Uh, we have tier one reentry. That's for our contractors and our key administrative personnel. Those folks that we need to get back in the district uh, at, at a moment's notice right after the storm to try to get us back up and running. We have those letters prepared. We keep them in reserve and we're ready to go at a moment's notice. Another item of interest is our return to work policy. Uh, these are conveyed to all employees prior to a storm. Uh, the, the main component of this is that employees are to main contact with their supervisors and uh, let them know their whereabouts and be prepared to return to work at the appropriate time. Uh, the last item, backup drives, servers uh, moved off site. Uh, this is on the IT side, basically not putting all of our eggs in one basket, keeping that redundancy in systems for our, our informational technology services. We have an on-site and an off-site location in case anything were to happen here at our central office complex. But it is important to note that our central office complex, uh, you know, due to the approval of the board and the superintendent some years back, is fully generated to keep services up and running. But we have that off-campus site just in case as well. Uh, more pre-hurricane planning initiatives. Uh, we have many communication methods. The key here is the redundancy of those communication methods and the multiple communication methods. Uh, we've learned through past events that maybe one day a cell phone works, maybe one day it's a hard line phone, maybe it's the internet, uh, maybe it's just a 700, 800 trunking radio which can be used locally on a tower and does not rely on cell phones. So uh, we like to keep a robust, uh, diverse system in place uh, to uh, cover all of our communication needs. Hurricane emergency event key sets. Uh, we keep extra sets of keys prepared uh, in the event of a hurricane or an event. So our staff that stays on site to uh, deal and mitigate with the, the disaster as it takes place is able to enter those schools and, and take care of any issues they may see. Uh, you see another item up there, the generators that we do have. I mentioned central office earlier, which is fully generated, as well as our maintenance facility to keep those operations up during the storm. And uh, we do have a transfer switch where a generator can be brought into our uh, EJ Landry site. Uh, another major item we have is hurricane teams. That's a big part of our preparation. I'll talk more about that when we get to the next slide. Okay, we have three main teams. We have an in-parish EOC team. This is selected administrative staff including the maintenance team. This team remains in the district throughout the event. Uh, they're pre-positioned, so as soon as the event's over, we can go out and make our assessments and, and try to get the schools back up and running as quick as possible, having those boots on the ground. Uh, this, uh, this group, many in this group, meet with the Department of Emergency Preparedness with the parish. And, and I do have to say at this time, uh, St. Charles Parish is, is a parish like no other. Um, the cooperation and coordination between quasi-governmental and governmental agencies is, is second to none. Uh, from the fire department, the EMS, uh, the EOC, the sheriff's department, um, the, the, the school system, including the school board, uh, the parish government, including elected officials, everybody works together uh, to do what's best for the citizens of the parish. So something for the parish to be very proud of. Um, Off-site command teams, selected executive staff and board. Obviously, they're relocated out of state. Uh, this is so we can have that central team there to uh, make decisions and, and communicate and coordinate with that in-parish team. Uh, various staff goes to, this, to these off-site locations, and we establish a time to meet with the in-parish team uh, to communicate, make decisions on how we want to move forward and get the schools back up and running as soon as possible. Our last team is our transportation team. It's a selected pool of drivers with buses. They remain in district on standby for possible evacuation. We cannot thank our drivers and our transportation system enough for providing the service for us as a school system, but also to the uh, citizens of the parish. Uh, district initiatives continued in that second phase, that post-hurricane immediate response. The main thing employees can do is to establish and maintain communication with their supervisor. 
when it's time for people to come back in, when we need you, whether you're a custodian or a teacher or a maintenance worker or a bus driver, we want to let those appropriate groups know it's safe to come back in to try to get us back to normal business. Post-hurricane recovery, one of the first things we want to do after the storm here is establish that recovery team in the district to address issues and coordinate recovery. Uh, this is that in-parish team that will be working with that, that off-site team to make those decisions that, that need to be made, whether it be financial or whether it be resources committed to get schools up and running as quickly as possible. Uh, of course, we want to conduct a thorough assessment of facilities. PPS does this along with contracted professional assessment staff to make sure our schools and facilities are safe for our students and staff to return. And uh, last but not least, we want to prepare our services and facilities for a return to normal operations. No matter what's the uh, disaster or event that takes place, all of our first responders will tell you that the, the key in any event is to return to normalcy as quick as possible. And, and every single one of them points to opening schools is a critical piece in getting the community back to normal. So uh, we take pride in that and we, and we work as diligently as we can to, to make that happen as soon as possible. We have several notification methods within the district to get our message out. Uh, Ms. D.B. Crevetto and the Public Information Department do a great job of putting our message out. We use the following means, Blackboard Connect, phone and email messaging system, Cox Cable, Channel 8, AT&T UVerse, Channel 99, New Orleans TV stations, WWL 870 AM radio, Facebook, Twitter, and the district website, www.stcharles.k12.la.us. Uh, this concludes my report. I'd like to thank the board and the superintendent for the support of our safety program, which includes our, our hurricane preparedness plan, uh, which allows us to help protect the student staff and citizens of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rome. It seems like just yesterday um, with Katrina, where we learned many lessons and communication was a big challenge for us. Uh, as I recall, text messaging was just being introduced and it was the most successful means of communication. We have many, many methods of communication now. So thank you for that report, very thorough. While students are enjoying their summer break, teachers and administrators are busy preparing for the new school year. Hundreds of teachers are attending professional development sessions on topics in the areas of English language arts, science, and social studies, as well as mathematics. When you see teachers and administrators this summer, please thank them for their focus on continuous improvement of teaching and learning. Free and reduced meal applications from the Child Nutrition Department will be mailed to parents this summer. This mailing allows the Child Nutrition Department to process meal applications in July and provide meal benefits the very first day of school. A message will be sent to parents through the district's Blackboard Connect phone messaging system to inform parents when the application packets are mailed. We encourage you to submit the application online, which will be available in mid-July. But if you need assistance with the online application, please contact the Child Nutrition Department at 985-785-3181. Additional information regarding meal benefits can also be found on the district's website under the Child Nutrition Department. We're excited to announce again the annual youth rally for St. Charles Parish students and parents. This will take place on Saturday, August 4th from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. at the R.K. Smith Middle School. This is a change in the venue, so again, at R.K. Smith Middle School. The rally is sponsored by St. Charles Parish Department of Community Services, St. Charles Parish Sheriff's Office, Alpha Daughters of Zion, United Way of St. Charles, and of course the school system. There will be food and music along with interesting breakout sessions. And this is a great kickoff for the school year. I hope to see you there. And finally, earlier this week, residents should have received a mail out announcing the inaugural season of the Dr. Rodney R. LaFon Performing Arts Center. 
In addition to the center being a hub of teaching and learning experience in the arts, our, for our students as well as community members, citizens and families have the opportunity to attend a variety of performances by professionals and students. We encourage you to become a season ticket holder. By becoming a subscriber, you not only get the benefit of seeing amazing performances, but also helps provide opportunities for the students in St. Charles Parish to experience a performance and work with the artists themselves. For additional information, visit LafonArtsCenter.org or call 985-331-3670. And that includes my, concludes my report. Thank you for that report, Madam Superintendent. Entertain a motion to motion adjourn. Motion adjourn. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Robichaud, second by Mr. Nakan. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All opposed, nay. We stand adjourned.